everyone, Daryl here. How you doing today? Thanks for checking out the channel and watching our videos. Today we've got the 91 F-150 with the 5 liter 302 cubic inch V8 automatic transmission. And today we're going to replace a leaking radiator. Under the hood and it's already had the thermostat housing the radiator hoses and the water pump changed fairly recently um, and we have a leak that just started in the radiator itself so what we're going to do first thing we're going to do before we get started is use some PB blaster to spray on the transmission cooling lines and make them easier to get off As you can see there's the top one and there's another one down lower down below we're going to hit them both with a blast of PB blaster with the idea that that'll make it easier to get those connections off there without having any trouble. We're going to go ahead and hit the radiator mounting bolts and shroud bolts while we're at it too. Just hit everything up under here that we can find and get to just to make the job a little easier here. And we're going to let that set for five or ten minutes, go get the rest of our tools ready, drain the coolant that's left in the radiator out, and get right to it. Taking things apart, so we're going to unsnap the jack handle here, just pull it aside, and we're going to get our flat screwdriver underneath these clips here, and just lift them up like that, working them back and forth so we don't break them. This one's already missing. I'll trip to the junk air soon, we'll have that fixed though millimeter bolts that hold the fan shroud to the radiator. We're going to take those off first so we can get the shroud out of the way. Totally loose now. This is released. The air intake is released. Now I've got two bolts on top that go through the radiator tabs into the radiator front support. We'll take both those out. Those are 10 millimeter. We're taking off the upper radiator hose, 5 16 nut driver also eight millimeter is the same but that would be just fine cooling lines off from the transmission can be tricky the brass on the metal line going into the radiator can get corroded and damaged and weld itself together I sprayed PB blaster on it let it soak hit it with the torch got it good and hot sprayed it again went and bought a brand new quality line wrench and it still rounded off the corners on the compression nut going in so I got my vice grip pliers out, locked it down really, really tight, squeezed it, used a 5 8 inch wrench to grab a hold of the back bracket with so it wouldn't spin that when I tried to turn it. Got on it really hard and pulled, and it came loose. So the top one's loose. That's one trick on how to do it. Got the radiator loose, just two bolts of the shroud, two bolts of the radiator, two cooling lines for the transmission, and two radiator hoses. The top cooling line we were able to get out with heat and lubrication and a pair of vice grips because even with a nice new line wrench it didn't take it out. The bottom one we got a good grip on it, lubed it, turned it, but the actual tubing itself snapped off. It didn't spin inside, it was seized up, it wouldn't spin. So we're going to repair it with a piece of rubber hose and some hose clamps and I will show you how easy that is to do. Basement radiator, we got this on eBay, it was about $60. Um, just a couple differences between it and the standard radiator that was in it. Not much, so to speak of. The main difference was the filler cap on top on the original radiator came off on like a 45 degree angle back towards you. And this one goes straight up. And then once you get the radiator... Oh, oh this one also has a generic overflow extra fitting here. The normal overflow fitting we use is here. It also has a bigger fitting here, which is capped off, which would be used on certain models. But we don't need that on this one, so that stays capped off. We've got the standard fitting for the transmission cooling line here. And down here we took and added a hose bib to the threaded fitting. Because we're going to take a piece of rubber hose and we're going to slide it over that nipple bib. Put a hose clamp on it. And the other end of this hose is going to slide over the broken part of the cooling line up in the engine compartment. And that's going to be clamped on up there. So we'll still have our full flow coolant through here. And... Our hose, radiator hose goes here and here. Other than that, it's the same. Oh, we did have to install these 
clips, these two bottom uh, anti-rattle clips, I believe they're called. We had to unhook those from a wire and plug them in on the bottom where they belong. And they gave us four of them, but this particular radiator doesn't seem like it uses four. The one we took off only had two. So we're going to go out and set this in place now and get it finished up. We had to transfer over were the two speed nut brackets for the fan shroud, one on each side, and the rubber bushings and supports for the radiator top bolts on each side. They just snap back through the hole and you can move them in and out to line them up where they need to be. You push the radiator down on its rubber mountings and pull it back into place.